EU that they're trying to do on, um, you know, through the back door now. And why people believe the spin that comes along with them just it, it evades me. I, I really, because um, none of the facts have changed, Ranjan. In, in fact, most of the counter arguments have since been backed up by copious amounts of further evidence. So uh, it's, you know, you don't need chat GPT or to ban it or anything like that. All you have to do is pay attention for more than one cycle and the cycles are getting shorter and shorter. So we COVID last for two, lasted for two years or that whole narrative. And it's kind of falling away a bit at the moment, isn't it? But if you look at what was happening at the beginning of that two year period and now what's happened since, what we've actually been replicating is the period from about 2016 to 2019, right? And then the period from uh, 2008 to 2010, right? Um, you can superimpose that onto the period from 2020 to 2022 and then if you take the period from 2010 to 2012 um that's kind of where we're at at the moment and 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 this is government by spreadsheet it's government by you know by algorithm um and so this idea of um you know, we're going to be run by some sort of great artificial intelligence or something. Um, it will get all its programming data. All of the data will come from um, basically post the two uh, the dot com bubble. So uh, this is the other thing because the internet before twenty um, be before two thousand kind of ceased to exist uh, after the dot com bubble. And the dot com bubble served the purpose of centralizing everything massively, you know, and then Amazon, you know, all the CIA, NSA corporations that took, you know, took monopolistic positions um, at key uh, control points in the world exploded after those points in time. Yeah. Uh, and, and so um, it's become. I mean, I I, I I get up in the morning and I I I mean, I'm I'm still working on my blog from today and I I I've, I've actually just gone through David's um, blog. Um, and there was a very witty quote quote and I just found the blog that it came from and it's it, it it's a post about how to destroy the web of debt in 2014. A guy from called Fitzy made a very funny quip um about why one place is, is in another place and so on and so forth um and it isn't just stuff reminding you of stuff that's happened before that it really is it, it's like um it, it, do you know the tv channel dave there's a tv channel that was called dave that came out which had repeated lots of old popular tv shows sure. um well it's kind of like dave politics you know it's just repeating all the the old popular sort of you know so t and ttip just one of those things which one was that ttip the the the, the which is now it's, 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 it's gone all LGBTQ, X, Y, Z to the nth on us, you know, they, they, but, but with, with, with these trade deals, they're putting the extra letters on the front. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think um, one of the advertising slogans for Dave that I remember once seeing was Dave Javu. Yeah. And I was actually thinking, <clears throat> you know, that what you were talking about, you know, to, to question, oh, is this deja vu? 
And then you actually said Dave. And so I remember the Dave slogan, Dave Ja Vu. Um, as for the acronyms, I remember 20 years ago seeing Vandana Shiva at the European Social Forum in Florence mm. and you know, a room full of people, as is normal when she speaks. And she was referring to things that had probably gone on 10 years previous when the World Trade Organization was set up. And she said, yeah, so these people, they think that they can patent life. And then she said, but you can't because life is life. You can't just patent it. And then she said, so they started referring to it uh, in the trade agreement as intellectual property services. So the services itself is already um, quite yeah. uh, controversial. And so what she said was that she and other people argued with the WTO, no, 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 you can't call it um, uh, intellectual property services because they're not, you can't trade that. And so to get around that, they then created a new term, TRIPS, and they put the two letters in front and they said trade related intellectual property services. We've given it a name now, so we'll just consider it real. So, and so the, the actual, so it's just kind yeah, of that, unfair. Trippy, <laughs> What's that? I said that's trippy. <laughs> Very, very. Well, yeah, you wonder, what do you have to smoke before going into one of these meetings to put uh, that argument in front of a series of judges and, and arbitrators and, and for it to fly? Yeah. It's, it, it is just, it's absolutely, absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. So anyway, you were saying, so, I mean, I remember back then, uh, that's when they were doing the general agreement in trading services. So you had Seattle. And then you had the Doha round, and then you had uh, WTO GATS, and mode four is from GATS. And so that's the reason why when TTIP um, got, when it was first announced in 2013, I didn't know. I'd heard people talking about it, but it didn't have a name. And then uh, Obama announces it in Enniskillen mm -hmm. with Cameron, G8 2013, with Gates in London. And then it gets starts getting talked about with a name in 2014, the backlash starts, the resistance starts, the, the bits of the Occupy movement that I knew about were, you know, were, were active in that. And that was all in the run up to Brexit. And so yeah. then Farrell, and, and so basically TTIP was a big reason for Brexit. It just was. It was a massive reason for Brexit. And as you said now, um, in the seven years since that vote, um, people have been pushed around in so many different ways, cognitively, information wise that cptpp which was just a fucking joke the first time i saw it i thought is this a joke i remember doing a blog post where um just after covid uh, our then foreign secretary dominic robb is seen signing a deal in vietnam and they made a really well they didn't make a big deal out of it but they still did it mm -hmm. um, and he's there in vietnam uh i think he's doing some sort of a fist bump wearing a mask and underneath the you know, in, in between him, he's sitting down. The other guy is over there. And in between them is, um, is it Ho Chi Minh? Like, right. Whoever it is, you know, like the, the godfather of Vietnam kind of thing. You know, the winner, the communist star, you know, like, you know, navigating yeah. under a communist flag. It was absolutely amazing. And you see that and you just go, this is supposed to be what we're doing now. And bit by bit, they think by not mentioning it. And also the other thing that's interesting is CPTPP is officially, you know how you can um, back, you know, you can, you can create and back a law and put it through parliament. Well, in global politics, CPTPP is technically it's been put in there by the New Zealand. It's a Kiwi thing. Mm. Um, very, and so this is all the Indo-Pacific tilt. Um, well, yeah, they're, precisely. They're, I mean, it's it, because there, there's the thing. TPP and the TTIP, isn't there? Yeah, <clears> so the one was the American and the Pacific, and the other one was the European one. And yeah, the European then, one got tremendous pushback. And of course, TTIP, you, you, you can't look at that without looking at NAFTA. And NAFTA has been a massive failure, as predicted by Ross Perot. Perot. And NAFTA yeah. at 20 years old, th 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 there's a very good sort of report on, on it. And all the stuff mm. that Ross Perot said could go wrong, did go wrong. Um, and of course, the big pusher of, of, of that going. was Al Gore. And, and, and when Clinton came in, and so this, uh, 
be, 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 because the be, be, because the new cycle has Alzheimer's, right? Um, well, actually, no, it's not because it it doesn't remember the past. It, it's actually got um, it's actually got dementia, isn't it? So, it, or whatever it, it's got short term, it's got no short term memory, um, and there's no there's no context, there's there's no historical context. And the population has been treated like like a goldfish. You know, they say goldfish don't have very good memory and all the rest of it. Uh, um, yeah, I. I... You're you're completely you're completely against all trade agreements, aren't you? Well, I. I I don't think that trade agreements have got anything to do with with with, with commerce, but or or, or, or um, you see, this is where you have to get in. the terminology is really important because free market and free trade are not what we intuitively think they are right <clears throat> so if you if you've got a market and you've got free exchange between people people in different countries people in different towns you know just between people free agents doing non-coercive mutually beneficial mutual coincidence of wants stuff okay right people will do that you don't need a you do not need a trade deal to do that what the trade deal is is, is, is it's got nothing to do with free trade it's putting a layer of um coercion into it right so so it, it's like saying right if you're going to do that we'll let you do that with with in our market if we can do that in in, in your market i.e um what they they talk about it as a sort of like like leveling the playing field but it's a set of rules by which they agree to attack the the consumers in each other's markets now the difficulty for <clears throat> for democracy and politicians being involved in all of this stuff is consumers as marks consumers are also citizens so uh, a, a business's customer base is made up of people who make up that jurisdiction, right? So, so dehumanising people and um, to to become just units of consumption or units of labour, right? Uh, so that it's they, they they can sit nicely and be shuffled around in some plutocrat's spreadsheet, okay, is not okay, and it leads to all sorts of shit, and the all sorts of shit that we have at the moment. And at um, have you seen this Cory Doctorow word in shitification? He coined no. it about about um he coined it about uh how apps in the internet or digital services okay have become not about the person using the app but 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 of controlling that person and exploiting that person and and the process he's dubbed it as in shitification <laughs> and, and, <clears throat> You can widen that out to the inshitification of, of government in general. And of course, they're totally obsessed with their their digital, you know, got to go digital. You know, we've got a very clever algorithm to go with this old chap, you know. Oh, yes, 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 we do digital. We do digital. Have a word with my man that does digital. They are a bunch of cunts, Ranjem. I fucking... I, I didn't think it was possible that someone could annoy me more than, say, Tony Blair. 
but I, I do think Rishi Sunak does. I think I think he's more annoying than Tony Blair. No, but hold on, hold on, hold on. Rishi Sunak is Tony Blair. Well, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. But well, he's 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 gone to the Trudeau school of dress up. <laughs> dress up. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Dear, oh dear. Um, well, yeah, I think um, whilst so I, I went on to a Telegram channel the other day, I don't go on there very often. So I went on there the other day and it was so funny because I could see one meme saying, OK, how can we have a brown mayor, a brown head of Scotland, a brown Westminster and a brown uh Republic of Ireland, you know, at the leadership of all of these things, and people are there saying it's outrageous. All these memes, and then at the same time, because you know, not everybody is specifically fixed on the colour of the person. So then you'll see other things coming in, and all of the other things are talking about um, fifteen-minute cities and central bank digital currencies and the vaccine. And so it's the the, the so-called anti-vax movement. Then afterwards, these are all of the ideas that are parading in there. Because it's it can only happen in what you would call the alternative media or whatever. Because if you if it's mentioned anywhere else, it's just called conspiracy theory. So all of those different things are there, but CPTPP isn't there, right? And that that's quite funny that you know you have all of these people, you know, and good, you know, people are talking about things, um, but CPTPP, like as if NAFTA, TTIP, TISA, uh, the, you know, the, the Canadian one. They're all the Is same it, thing, and they stem from yeah. the same ideology, and they stem yeah. from a command and control state monopoly capitalism. And you can you can colour it as uh, Stalinism, or you can colour it colour it as Nazism. You can colour it as <coughs> you know. <coughs> yeah. Do, do you remember fascism? Do, do, all, all sorts of different things. Do you remember? Do you remember that time I told you that I listened to? Uh, program on YouTube from the 70s, which was Michael Foote, uh, Reggie Maudling, uh, Roy Jenkins and Enoch Powell. Mm -hmm. And the four of them spoke. I'm sure you remember me mentioning this. The four yeah. of them spoke and each one of them, you know, the two centrists being Jenkins and um, Maudling and the two further out being Powell and mm -hmm. uh, Michael Foote. Each one of them, when they referred to their opponent within their own party, and the centrist, you know, in the other party, uh, each one of them was able to say, Heath is for a corporate state. You know, I am against mm. it because, mm. you know, so Foot and Powell would both say, Heath is mm. for a corporate state. We are against that. And so each yeah. one of them was able to <clears throat> exa exactly articulate the other person's argument mm. and say, I disagree with them on this and yeah. say what they disagreed on. At the moment, we don't have that. At the moment, if you talk about things like CB, you know, central bank digital currencies, which about any of these things, everyone else will not say, I understand your argument and I'm against it because they'll just say you're not allowed to come to the field of play. And so yeah. that lack of conversation is deeply problematic um, in that. I mean, for someone like me in the middle, um, I would be very, very well saying the middle. I mean, not not being any of these people, um, I would be very happy to have to convene conversations between people who were, you know, rigidly mm. sticking to their, you know, to one of those arguments and and that type of thing. It, I don't know if it happens. You know, we should have a BBC and an ITV and a Sky and, and all of these things. They should be having conversations between people on these subjects to give people a chance mm. um, to make up their minds for themselves. That doesn't seem to be happening. And well, the, uh, they're losing their audience, aren't they? I mean, people still watch Question Time. You see that sort of crops up. I, I've just put yeah, a link in actually. To... Yeah, but they're all noise. It's all noise questions. Yeah, they, they never I, get the link. I just put a link into a, there's a series of discussions between Radhika Desai and Michael Hudson. Now, Radhika Desai, I'd not come across her before, but she is a professor of geopolitics in Manitoba, I think it is. Um, okay. somewhere in Canada. Anyway, she's brilliant. And and Michael Hudson's brilliant. Um, and he wrote, I, I haven't read any of her books yet. I'm going to have to download some. Um, but but um, they're really worth listening to. And his book, Super Imperialism, that came out ages ago, 
is is really worth really worth reading. The thing is, Michael Hudson, um, he worked under oh god, the futurist that helped with setting up the WF that 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 Johnny Redmore's go, goes on about. Yarbaville, Yuval Harris. No, 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 no. This is going back to the say that. I think it was that I think there was a thing called the Hudson Institute or the Hoover yeah. Institute that, that that Hudson worked for, and the guy that he worked under was called something Khan or Coon or something like that. Um, okay. And anyway, uh, who, not who was a Thomas Coon? Not Thomas Coon. He's an academic. Not Thomas Coon, the paradigm guy. He's an academic. No, not no, Thomas not him. No, but there's another. There's this other guy. All right. Yeah. Um, and you see part of the. You know, the red more stuff. I look at that. Um, but the, the thing I find about it and a lot of. I'd say people of his ilk. Right. Is they tend to think, right, we're going to put someone in a pigeonhole and then everything else about them has to be thrown out with the bathwater then. So throw the baby out with the bathwater. So. And therefore, the guilt by association, what you can or can't read. It's yeah. a little bit like with that, you know, when I said to someone, oh, you should read Ezra Pound's ABC of e Economics. Oh, he's a fascist, can't possibly do that. You must be a fascist for some, you know. Number one, he was an alleged fascist. And number two, he's an alleged anti-Semite, you know. I mean, uh, he himself didn't consider himself the anti-Semitic. Anti hold, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think I think it's much better to look at it like this. This is my way of looking at it, mm. is that there are periods of time when it's quite clear that Ezra Pound is ticking all of those boxes. Yeah. And I, I, I don't care. I don't care because. Yeah, and Enoch you know, Powell, say, for, for some of his stuff. Exactly. But, look at who I just mentioned. Yeah, yeah I just mentioned Powell. Exactly. So mm. these people, I think. So what? Well, it, 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 I, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. On, on the parts where you find that they're incorrect or wrong, it's quite, you know, you can go through it. And, 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 yeah, actually and, just those out. and where they're right or where they're onto something, you know, it, it, it is worthy of discussion, investigation, study, further thought. To, uh, and and it, it's, um, um, well, I, this can whole I just idea. Say this, can I just say that, can I just say this with, with Johnny's work, right? So I've got sympathy. Um, basically, you know, I like Johnny. I interact with him in a very tiny way occasionally. But um, I think that um, if you are a musician and, um, you know, someone who's basically just been a working man doing his thing and you start coming across this information and you realise that it's not been covered properly and so you decide to start nodding at it, then that's what he's doing. And uh, in that sense, I, I consider him to be a journalist, but I also consider him to be an entertainer. And I consider him also to be someone who has to keep the show on the road as well and keep informing people. And, and that's the new world that we live in because of our platforms. So I say, you know, round of applause to him for doing what he does. I think it's obviously, I don't want to just say, if it's not on the BBC, it's bollocks. I don't want to say that. Um, and I don't want to say, like, I've told him personally that I disagreed with, or I shouldn't even say disagreed with, because the first thing I had to say after I told him that I had a concern about something that he'd been either saying or retweeting, the first thing I then had to say was, I'm not policing you. <laughs> you know, look, I'm not policing you. Just because, for whatever reason, you've got reasons to think that this is something worth sharing, that doesn't mean me not liking it means you have to shut the fuck up. It's just me having a conversation with you, and it's private. You know, I'd love to fucking screenshot it and put it out, but then it will just like make it look like I was attacking him, and I'm not. You know, yeah. so I yeah, I, I I'm down with that. I mean, I I I think that's a good way of of figuring shit out. You know. Mm. But yeah, so media's broken. CPTPP is happening. Trade agreements have been a massive deal for ages. And all we get told is that Brexit was about yeah, but, um, immigration. Yeah, but they, 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 they've been made a great deal of, right? But they're the biggest nothing burgers in the fucking universe. I mean, if, if, if we all were relying on these politicians or these corporate uh, troffers, okay, to 
to put bread on our tables, right, we'd have starved to death a long time ago. They don't create wealth. They, they cause way more trouble. You know, that they, 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 they are a net negative to the whole system. We are better off without them. It was discovered in the 1950s that that was the case. And there was a whole slew of, of what they called antitrust, which is anti-monopoly legislation. OK, the same thing happened in the late 1890s. Monopoly is bad. Corporatism tends to monopoly and you end up with one party states and one corporation monopolies and you end up with that kind of whole tyranny thing right and you get all they're interested is controlling the whole pie regardless of whether there's enough of that pie to go around and that's where this all ends up and that, well, that's what we're so perilously yeah. close to and it, I, it I doesn't ask. take long it doesn't take long with the type of money system that we've got to put all of the bargaining chips into sufficiently few hands that a very small group of people like Bill Gates, like Jeff Bezos, like Mark Zuckerberg, um, you know, all of these, uh, like can Warren just, Buffett. I, I, let's just, not we, leave Warren Buffett out of there because yeah, he's everybody's favourite on? one or whatever. He's can as guilty as the now? bloody rest of them. Yeah, can we just hover on Zuckerberg for a moment? Because um, I heard today, because I is Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on on the on um, on, can we, choose, on can we choose one of the Gentiles, please? Um, <laughs> well, just. I can't, I, to, to be honest, I can't tell any of them apart anyway. But um, I think with the Zuckerberg thing at the moment, last weekend and over the week, one thing I heard on French radio this morning was that in Italy they're banning ChatGPT at least for six months. Anyway, they, they're banning it. But um, the thing that was really, really big that I saw coming out on TikTok this week from you know people in America and stuff like that was the legislation that's being put through in america i mean i can't believe this this is so controlling and so this is back to what was that thing that happened was it the was it the copper do you remember in 2011 12 they were trying to do a big intellectual property thing um i can't remember what it was called but it was a huge there was a huge backlash the electronic frontier or whoever else mm. you know were part of the people against it and what's his name the guy that killed himself the kid that killed himself uh the american uh, aaron schwartz you know there was oh, right, huge, yeah. you know to, to do intellectual property and data and free data and stuff like that basically um they the anti TikTok law that I don't know if it's passed, but people were reading out some of the clauses and it basically said, listen to this. If you're in America and you use a VPN, mm -hmm. you can go to I think it basically says you can go to jail. You're a spy. Yeah. But I in told China, you about it, that report, the cyber solarium about two years ago. <clears throat> they hate but, encryption. Oh, they hate, hate VPNs. I mean, they, 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 they take it as an absolute sure fired thing of guilt that if you don't want them nosing around anywhere they please that you must be guilty i mean that, that it's it, it it really is appalling I so mean, yeah i've so, seen that stuff yeah so basically this but everyone's saying this is zuckerberg zuckerberg is so scared of tiktok and all of these different um social media people are trying to copy tiktok <coughs> and, and, and so, so now we're at the point where they're so scared of them that they're copying them in every way. And they're saying, if you, as an American, if we ban TikTok and you pretend to be outside America and you use the app on your smartphone, you know, N-shitification, if you actually find a form of N-shitification that you actually like, because it means that you can listen to other people telling you about what's going on in their heads, uh, you know, in a way that's much better than, you know, uh, Twitter or whatever else, then um, goodbye. So they want the basically they want their own one that they can control. And if you use a fucking no, VPN, you buy it, you're nicked. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, that's mental. And that's happening now. They, and so then they're obviously going to try and do it here. Um, so the guy that was being interviewed, I was listening to him. I, mean, I hadn't he hasn't started yet, but it's Thierry Breton. And he is very high up in the EU. He's one of the commissioners. And he's got really quite a broad thing because he, I think he's commissioner for uh, digital and business and security. When I say security, I mean, yeah, kind of like tech and stuff like that. 
So this guy, I think he used to be in charge of France Telecom. He was in charge of EADS. I mean, this guy is, you know, if there is such a thing as corporate state corruption and just being at the top of it and scandals and stuff like that. This guy. So I think I don't know if you he, don't say. <laughs> yeah, I think I think he failed his first well, interview. What makes you say that? Mr. Well, when von Le- yeah, exactly. Well, when von Del- I just I just thought I'd mention it. But yeah. when von der Leyen came in, she said, "Right, he's my man," and so he's the French commissioner. So him and Lagarde, and her, they're there, you know, with Macron, and they're basically doing all of these things out of desperation. It's all just whatever it takes. Did you see the video of the of the French police attacking French firemen? Fuck yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> How is that happening? This, yeah. the thing, I, because that sort of things like, happened before. I, I, I have seen that before where, where firemen and coppers have... Uh, I, I think I've seen it on picket lines in the UK, actually. But, in, uh, in, but, uh, but that, that was a particularly spectacular example, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, I mean, they would go for it. And the thing is that in the UK, they won't put that on the actual news. And because people have said to me, they won't put it on the... So this woman that I know, German woman, lives in London. She said to me, that her kid was going to go on some trip to Paris uh, last week. And because she doesn't look at the quote unquote conspiracy mm-hmm. theory channels, um, none of the parents knew what was actually happening in Paris. So it wasn't until the last minute that it was decided that they would go to, this was funny, they went to Vichy instead of Paris. <sighs> I, didn't say, I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. <laughs> um, I just said, oh, yeah, OK, like that. But the fact is, we're not being told what's going on over the road. No, it's insane, and 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 they and that's why they want to ban things where everyone says, by the way, this is what's going down. Well, we're well, every- precisely, yeah, of course, of course. I, it's it, it's incredibly frustrating at the moment. I mean, there is a huge credit crunch going on. I mean, there's a massive deflation of the currency happening at the moment. <clears throat> and um of course can you explain what you mean when you say that because if you say there's a deflation of the currency do you, you don't mean all the currencies what do you mean no what, what i'm talking about you mean is, the dollar? Is, is, is is available credit in the economy is shrinking okay right. and, al- and an alarming that, rate so how's that deflation well if, if people haven't got money to spend on stuff they can't spend the money and, and yeah. so basically prices collapse and it's very, very bad for business. But it's actually really quite bad. Bankers love deflation because it makes money, makes them more important, gives them okay, more. So, oh. I'm, so, so I'm beginning to realise that when you say deflation, you're not talking about the deflation of one currency versus another. You're talking about an overall reduction in the amount of credit full stop available. Yeah. I'm, I'm talking about it. Yeah, it, it's called a debt deflation and, and, and it's happening worldwide at the moment. Well, in the G7 anyway. Um, and w- w- what's happening is consumers, citizens are being put under further and further pressure and it's being blamed on a cost of living crisis. OK, yeah, i.e. inflation. Now, um Corporations are making tons and tons of money. They've put their prices up. Yes, they have. And so that shows up as inflation. But it isn't because of too much money chasing too few goods, which is the the standard economics thing that people think is true, which isn't true. Okay, it can be true in certain circumstances, but it it doesn't hold up in most. So what is going on? Yeah, what is going on? Um, Well, what's going on is that um weaker hands are being forced into for selling I mean, two big construction companies went bust in australia in the last couple of days very very big house builders construction companies that, that's just the start so of course you've, you've had the the smaller banks going bust so a lot of that's going to be happening now again what, what what's happening there is they have they're holding a, a lot of bonds in in their reserves. OK, the value of those bonds has gone down. OK, if they need to meet short term deposits, withdrawals, OK, they 
won't have sufficient cash or, 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 or site or liquid deposits to, to pay those people off. So they'll have to realise some of those bond losses to pony up the money to pay the real depositors, right? And the smaller banks, that's affecting more, right? And so a lot of the smaller banks are going to go bust. And that's... So the that, that, so that, 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 and that's a feature, not a bug. It's not a mistake. It, yeah. it, it absolutely is baked into the cake and it's absolutely on purpose. It's, it's so not. It's, so it's part of the cycle. That, yeah, so it's part of the cycle then that the bond prices have gone down. Therefore, these organisations' valuation has gone down and therefore they have to get the money to, in order to uh, pay people yeah. off. And well, then it, afterwards, it, when they try to sell it, they're selling no, it at lower it, prices. It, it, if cycle. you're a bank, OK. People expect the bank to be able to lend you money or to give your money back to people. Yeah. Right? So pe people deposit money with you. Yeah. Right? Or, and you also lend money. Now, you, you don't lend those deposits that come into you. But if people put the money into your bank, you've got to give it back to them. If if you lend money to people. Right. So you you, you own debts that other people owe to you. Right. That isn't done out of deposits, OK, but the ability to do it, OK, is founded in the assets that you have. Now, banks have uh, reserves that they hold at central banks and settle up differences mm. with, between each other with with that type of money. And it just gets balanced off at the end of the day in your your current account, if you like. So. Um, the way to look at it is that there are there are two circuits of credit, credit between banks and yeah. then banks and the real economy. Right. Right. Now, <clears throat> because the level of deposits that banks have in relation to the amount of business that they write is so incredibly low. Right. The whole thing has got out of kilter. Right. And so. Hmm. To meet these short term, getting that money out there. I, by the way, it would be well easy enough for the central banks to sort this out for the smaller banks, right? But smaller banks will go to the wall because they want them to, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, bigger banks won't because they don't want them to. They want bigger banks because that's greater control, even though it's even though it's way worse for the real economy for political control and monopoly control it's like oh happy days you know um we we we, we haven't got the problem of someone showing a good example that shows us up for the incompetent arseholes that we are right monopolists are like that so um so, so the credit crunch that's coming it's kind of like it's almost like an everything uh, credit crunch in the sense that one with this centralized one big bank or one big banking cartel, which is all it has been. OK, um, yeah. for them to have total control, political and financial control over everybody else. Right. Um, they do want the central bank digital currency. OK, so that's like one. One currency that controls the behavior of the bank. Uh, customer. Uh, but they're not treating customer, you know, the customer's supposed to always be right, you know, you know, cash is king and the customer's always right. OK, so if you're a merchant, that's that's what you know. Those are the rules you have to stick to. Right. Mm. Not if you're a banker, you know. It's basically if you're a banker, it's debt is king. I am king. I, I, the banker, am king and the customer is my vassal. There aren't customers, there are vassals and that it's that stark. It is that stark. And so if you listen to Carsten's, the BIS guy talking about central bank, bank digital and the control. You know, if you look at uh, Christine Lagarde talking about it in that spoof video, the Russians that ran yeah. Bless her, you know she she's sort of oh yeah you can kind of can sort of and all the rest of it. I mean I, I mean I think she seems like a nice person and I I, 
you know, there, there are innocents in all of this sort of thing. And I, I just, you know, I kind of think, well, she probably believes that, yeah, it could be bad, but, it, you know, we're going to do good stuff with this stuff. I, don't, I mean, there are, I, I do think there are people that they, they, they're kind of too nice in a way. Do you, do you see what I mean? I, mean, I, I don't think, I, I don't think, I, I don't think the, the evil geniuses are even alive anymore, to be honest. The people who dreamt all this stuff up, okay, I, I think they've, they've long gone and, and we're, de thank God, we're dealing with um, the people who've had the reins passed on to them. We're a bunch of yes men that aren't capable of original thought. Well, you know, when you when you when you mention her, it reminds me of I told you about a couple of weeks ago. I went to see what's the name speak, uh, Cass Sunstein, and he was talking about algorithms. The guy who did Nudge, and at the end of it, I think I went up to him to talk to him about some of the examples that he'd given. But I told you he talked about law, medicine, revolution, uh, deciding which pop tunes were going to become famous out mm -hmm. of a bunch of tunes and things like that. But his wife is, I think, called Samantha Power, right at the top of USAID. I think sure I mentioned this to you last time. And if you look at the, the Ukraine bonds that are coming out, it says sponsored by the Ukrainian government and USAID. And so, yeah, I mean, Victoria Newland, these people that are just going around the world uh, meddling and maybe, you know, for their own psychopathological um, historical reasons, they think they're all doing the right thing. Well, I mean, that's, I mean, that's I probably know, what I... the conquistadors thought when they went to South America. Yeah, we'll, en we'll enslave people. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, that's it. On, on behalf of God, of course. You know, exactly. So, so it's you know it's for their own good. But uh, th there you go. I mean, that's the, the, the we're kind of facing the um, yeah the problem that you've got a lot of people with good intentions but very poor understanding mm. you know not not nearly enough cynicism not nearly, well, nearly enough skepticism well when jordan peterson a couple of years ago became uh, addicted to drugs uh, of some nature I think his wife had cancer and a bunch of other things. And, you know, he was regarded as being the incels god or hero or whatever. And, you know, just a lot of pressure. And then suddenly, um, every time he appeared on social media, he was crying. Mm. And he did, he did actually seem to become a lot nicer. Um, and so, for example, Wittgenstein doing the Tractatus and then afterwards saying, actually, I've decided I'm a homosexual. A few of my brothers have killed themselves. <laughs> There's a fucking war on. Um, None of what I said was valid. You know, it's all just bollocks. Apparently, Chomsky has changed his mind on everything. You know, like over the course of time, he changes his mind on everything, apparently. Well, not not necessarily the propaganda stuff, but, uh, you know, linguistics wise. And um, yeah, so I think we should have space for people to change their mind. Have you seen what's going on with Tucker Carlson? Well, I, I, I wouldn't say I've seen what's going on, but I've, I've seen that. Um, I, I mean, I do what I watch. I, I, I watch Alex Jones. I, 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 Infowars is my guilty pleasure. <laughs> I, I, I really quite enjoy it. Um, I, it's very, very funny. I mean, there, there, there's, you know, there's some 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 stuff that they do just laughing at themselves is funny i mean <laughs> so, anyway, it's one of my guilty pleasures uh, and uh um i like the david knight show and david knight used to work on info wars but but um uh fell out with with some of the uh the, there was one guy in, in uh, there's a guy called steve pachenik that that was on it um who, who is a cia guy or whatever that that sort of said a few things that were obviously misleading on purpose for whatever reason whatever um uh but um so so, so th they they mentioned tucker carlson so i'll occasionally see stuff on there and then the other guy i i i, I, I do like jimmy Dore. he makes me laugh What's uh, and, and, What's and so he, he will put tucker Carlson's carlson stuff on yeah. too and then Russell Brand, who I also watch occasionally, um, 
he mentions him now and again as well. What has happened to Webster Tarpley? Um, well, Webster Tarpley, that's what I've looked at his website a couple of weeks ago. Does he still do Tarpley radio? Uh, I haven't listened to it if he does, but I, I can remember I, I, I looked something up and he had taken a view, or, or taken a position, I think it was on vaccines or whatever, which I was really surprised about. You know, it's a bit like, you know, from a Chomsky point of view, it's kind of like, well, I'll ring up, see what Tarpley's on about at the moment. I read and I thought, oh, blimey, you know, I wasn't expecting that. You know, was, that, he telling, was he telling everyone to take the vaccine or go to jail? It was all fair. It was fairly recent stuff. And, and um, uh, I, I didn't pay it that much mind. Because I do revisit people that I've read in the past just to see what they're saying. The, the other guy that I come up get is this guy called Paul Craig Roberts that was quite in the frame last time round being interviewed by people like Max, um, you know, Max and Stacy, whatever he's called, the Bitcoin gold. Yeah, Kaiser. Max Kaiser, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and um, it looks like it looks like Webster's Web, Web got something out every Saturday, and uh, the next one's out tomorrow. Yeah, I have to have a look. I, I, like I said, I, I put it in a blog that I did a couple of weeks ago. You know, this from Webster's Harpley, not what I was expecting, sort of thing. Well, you know, I, um, I'm sure he's got his reasons for thinking whatever he thinks. I mean, he, you know, the guy's a clever guy. Oh, uh, the interesting thing, um, you see, I, I, I read a lot of LaRouche stuff. Um, and La, LaRouche and uh, he, he or, or they as a group draw on the uh, political economists from the late 19th century in America one guy in particular called Carey uh, and what they call the American system uh, which is free market capitalism as opposed to free trade capitalism right now Free trade has got nothing to do with the free market, right? It, you'd think that they would have something to do with each other, but they don't. Um, okay. And um, what's called the free market is talking about free market co competition, but not necessarily open bar borders. Um, and. Okay. Uh, some protection of core industries, things like food security, say, um, energy security, those sorts of things, controlling your own currency, right? Those sorts of things in the free market American system, okay, are consistent with the American system of, 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 of capitalism, but they're not consistent with the uh, free trade capitalism, which is more properly called mercantilism, and it's a monetarist uh, form of political economy, which, are, which isn't really capitalism, it's state monopoly capitalism, it's fascism. And of course, fascism goes all the way back to Plato. It goes all the way back to the pharaohs. It goes all the way back to Babylonia, the Babylonian system, the Venetian system, the Dutch system, the American East India system, uh, the, 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 the British Imperial uh, East India system that Michael Hudson goes on about a lot in super imperialism, how that's transferred to the United States. And so the next thing that's going on at the moment is that is moving from uh, Wall Street, London, which are still going to be back offices of it. Um, and, and, you know, the growth of Asana, this great regional capital that's being built in Kazakhstan. Um, a lot of people in the more esoteric uh, aspects of sceptical and critical thinking, if we can call it that, other people call them conspiracy theorists, were looking at Asana several years ago the same people looking at all the underground airport type stuff and all this sort of thing now um uh the interesting thing about that is, is that chinese belt and road um what 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 russia's up to with the bricks 
whether whether the replacement world currency remains a dollar based and and and, and a western values based currency and political economy or whether we go to a eastern values based sino it's sino russian not not so i nearly said sino soviet <laughs> not soviets but did you see, I see and that, I that, see that, that that's happening at the moment i that's what i think is happening at the moment um but yeah, again, even, quick thing. In, line, in, line, in line with what you're saying i saw a story which said that an lng contract was settled in chinese yuan the other day yes yeah i mean that's it we had a conversation a couple of years ago about whether gas contracts had to be settled in dollars because oil contracts were written in dollars and it's kind of it you know like the lang lingua franca uh, fr uh, fr of the world is english the currency franca if you like it is the dollar right yeah. and, and 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 the point the point about the dollar is is that there's way more of them and so it, it is easier to use as long as someone isn't interfering with your ability to do it so the swift system for transferring digital dollars around the place banning iran from that you know that was a bad idea if you wanted to retain what de, de gaulle called the exorbitant privilege of being the reserve currency now of course he called it that under the gold standard or uh, the gold win well, you know um america came off gold in in in, in 71 um uh, but of course um Britain went through all the same stuff coming off gold in the 1920s and, and how that all works. The classical trilemma of um, Churchill's letter to the Treasury, all of that stuff. I was blogging about this stuff about, you know, it, it was really relevant already um, at the beginning of the lockdown and stuff. So, um, yeah, no, I remember. Um, and, and it's it, it, it's pretty relevant now, of course, because it's it is all playing out the, the thing that surprises me more than anything is that it's that whatever is being rolled out isn't kind of ready to go and it's i think it is ready to go but the gangsters at the top so this is the political and corporate gangsters at the top including putin including sunak including the biden crime family <laughs> yeah whatever all the trump crime you know they're all basically um just pick pick a gangster or any gangster you know i mean i personally i would choose the mafia I, they've been at it longer and i i you know i think you get a fair deal whereas you know I, I i wouldn't choose these guys right but there you have it you know and like i wouldn't choose the russian mob either i'd go with the italian mob every time but you know and it's all mixed up isn't it but this is the problem this is people are looking at it as if it's all above board and none of them have got a dog in the fight and that's just ridiculous of course they've all got a fucking dog in the fight and they don't care can I, can about I, your can dog I just, can i just say this if you think of because I, I, I remember how sometimes you talk about oh you know the oligarchy is having a bit of an internal dispute over this and that um so if you look at the idea of being in terms of exorbitant privilege for example being a regulator of the game as well as a player then is there from a kind well, of it, current it, yeah i mean it's, it's you can't be a poacher and a gamekeeper at the same time sure, but that's the issue isn't it so if currently we have regulator and player uh in the form yeah, of well, rishi sunak's the case in point you know here we have a poacher turned gamekeeper that's still poaching yeah and so that's the same with the central banks and you know that's what regulators appear to be there for and nothing else uh if you look at the gas regulator over here the electricity regulator yeah, the water regulator i mean these regulators as well i think the other thing is there was um the adam smith institute i think when it was created so in the mid 80s or early 80s i think they did this thing called the omega report mm -hmm. i've only ever i've only ever seen uh, i think they did an omega report for each industry um, and it's essentially about denationalization, full stop. It might have actually, they might have done it in 79. But, um, and so basically they said the government departments that run everything, 
you know, from the view of the 70s. Uh, they will still exist, but you're going to have local government. You're going to have this thing called the Audit Commission and you're going to have regulators. So all of these regulatory bodies, they're all from then, you know, so they're less than 50 mm. years old, these regulatory well, bodies. Mate, I mean, yeah. I, I, one of the things um, in my blog, uh, there's a guy called James Kid Kidney and he retired from the SEC in 2014. And um, basically he said, I wanted to sue Goldman Sachs for the insider trading that went on all around the, you know, the financial crisis and they wouldn't let me. And Obama was at the front of the queue. So it was in Counterpunch. Now that article isn't on Counterpunch anymore, but it is on the Wayback Machine. And it's linked to in my blog today. I linked to it in a blog in 2014 and back in 2011. So the point about all of this stuff, OK, is that um, if you can study this stuff full time. Right. Uh, I mean, it took me about two years to figure it all out, studying it full time. But, you know, I'm talking, you know, many hours a day, whatever. And I, so, I mean, I spent the first five years that I came to Sweden studying really, really quite hard. And I, I did, um, you know, I, I, I I, I got downloaded courses and did them and all sorts of stuff, just, you know. Um, but um, with the internet, you can find stuff out. Um, just going back to Chomsky, I, I, at the beginning of all of this, I heard he, he was interviewed about the internet and what is the internet any good? And he sort of said, well, you know, it, is a library any good? It's only really as good as any kind of librarian or what, what he said is that without a framework of understanding, it's very difficult to go through any sort of body of information. This idea of a, 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 a framework of understanding is really important. So I, 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 people get their frames of understanding usually from schools of thought. So in philosophy, you have schools of thought. In maths, you have schools of thought. You know, in politics, mm. obviously, you have political worldviews and yeah. whatever, right? Um, now, the problem with getting your information from a worldview stroke school of thought is that if you then put your career on the rails within that school of thought, you are not perhaps going to continue to grow in terms of critically improving your own school of thought, as it were. And so this is where the silo side of, 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 of social media, digital control, divide and rule. Um, you see, if you put people into schools of thought and polarise them, you can ensure that they will never uh, be able to put themselves in touch with each other, if you like, and improve both. You know, this the, the idea that, you you know, you, you, if, if you share an idea with someone, you don't end up with an idea, half an idea each. You both have a whole idea and it can add to it. So going back to your intellectual property point, you know, your trip thing, you know. Um, uh, that's, you know, that 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 that's the the wickedness of intellectual property in digital and computer or you know it, it's the sort of wickedness that's allowed a complete charlatan like bill gates to accumulate the degree of financial and political power that he has with basically a very ordinary intellect, in my opinion. I mean, it's um, uh, yeah. That's your tyranny of the nerds. Tyranny of the nerds. The tyranny of the tyranny of the nerds. Yeah. But I mean, I, well, I, I don't. Like, I mean, he, he's hardly a nerd, frankly. I mean, I just, you know, I mean, he, he's a he's a plagiarist, a, a pilferer of other people's work, isn't he? Yeah. Um, Roger, shall I? Um, I think I'm going to um, do a couple of things around here. Are you around later? 
Uh, yeah, yeah, I am around. It's the Easter holiday, and so the children are off this week, and then my plan is to come back to the UK next week. I'm mean, I'm I, I'm working on a another deal at the moment, um, which I'm hoping will come off because I I've had to re uh, reposition for you know this this whole credit crunch thing. I mean it it, it it's um. Yeah, I, it, it, it's a difficult world to make any money in at the moment if, if you're not a monopolist <laughs> or, 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 or uh, you know, at, 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 at the front of the queue with where, where the silly money is being poured out or whatever. And, and that's the idea. That's by design, um, you know. Um, there's not a lot of wealth being created in the economy at the moment um, by design. Mm. And uh, you see, ultimately, that can end up in all sorts of really difficult shortages. Um, and I don't think the people in charge, some of them just don't understand it and others of them just don't care. Um, did you just say to me, did you just say to me that there is a liquidity problem? And also say that there are many reasons why things can go wrong, uh, like lots and lots and lots of very real reasons why things go wrong, apart from liquidity as well. Well, I think that's what you just said to me. Just then, well, yeah. uh, no, I, I, I didn't mean to say that. I, um, no. It's very hard to make a living at the moment. Um, right. It's very hard to create wealth at the moment, um, and that's because the power struggle that's going on um, is not interested in creating wealth. And in some, the destruction of other people's um, security is in their interest in terms of putting into place this even more coercion, which they're in right. charge of. And things fucking like up. this fucking trade deal, this was it CPTTP or whatever. Yeah. They get, um, it's at, you know, it, it's just nuts. You know, uh, the only person, the only person who I know who talks about that is Liz. Do you remember Liz Webster? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, she, you know, she and I, we said, oh, maybe we should set up CPTTP. Well, she put watch. you on the naughty step, didn't she? Because you were too much of a Brexiteer. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> not that I, not that I. That's I mean, it's it. not it's, really. You're, you've got to check your right wing. I mean, it's privilege, almost like a religious mate. thing. Check your right wing privilege there, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. It's a misunderstanding, I think. But there. yeah. No, well, I, I think that's the thing. I, 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 I think there are lots of those sorts of misunderstandings, and and it's, it's just because <laughs> people people are scared to be touched by the the stick of guilt by association and wrong think and it's mm. all, it, it's so orwellian it's all about it's all about oh you know wrong oh, guilty of wrong thing can't go anywhere near but you know there's a wrong thinker over there yeah i think it's 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 also something to do with westminster and you know because the, there's some power there you know on a decision making front and so in order to have any access to that you have to you know, look like you're conforming to a certain set of principles mm. to do with how you say things in public. And then afterwards, it's this domino effect of taboo. Bizarre. Anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's it. Anyway, look, nice talking to you. Yeah. See you soon. It's, it's a bit sunny here today. It's, it's, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, if you do... Uh, if you do old and miserable. If you do come back to the UK, um, I am around towards the later end of most afternoons. Okie dokie, mate. Good talking to you. Take care, Ranger. Cheers. Bye. Bye.